Hi, everybody. My name's Simon Ianson. I'm Chief Strategy Officer here at Hoist Group. Welcome to this Hoist Group, uh, or this Hoist Dashboard training session. And today we're going to look at all things related to TV and content. And over the next 20 minutes or so, I will walk you through a live demonstration of the tool. What's more, we are recording today's session. So if you miss something, don't worry, we'll make the recordings available at the end of the week so you can catch up. And what's more, if you listen to or see something interesting in the session that other colleagues in your hotel would find of value, don't hesitate to either forward them the video or ask your local Hoist Group office for a follow-up with a one-to-one -one demo, which is what we're happy to offer and provide to you going forward. And if you're not sure how to get in contact with your local Hoist uh, Group office, then drop us a line at marketing at hoistgroup.com and we will make sure that your request gets to uh, the right person. I see there are lots of attendees today. Thank you all for joining. There are some attendees, as I can see, who have attended every single session since we started three, three weeks ago. And really my heartfelt thank you to you all. Uh, it's been amazing that, that, that you've participated so much and contributed with so many questions. But equally, for those of you who are on your first session today, welcome to you too. Um, please use this as an interactive session. We have a great panel lined up uh, with us today, lots of subject matter experts uh, who I'll go through in a bit more detail at the end, uh, the details of whom. But most importantly, we want, we want to make this an interactive session. So don't hesitate to raise any questions you have throughout, and you do this through on your Zoom taskbar here. There is a Q&A button or a QA button. Uh, click on that write your question in, and once the online demonstration part is completed, we'll open up the floor to questions. And we can also easily slip back into the screen share presentation mode to walk you through any specific requests. So don't be shy, send us your questions. If you're not sure on something, raise your hand and we'll be more than happy to, to answer it. Great, let's, uh, let's go to the demo itself. I'm gonna share my screen here, just one second. And again, Matt, if you can just confirm as and when you can see my screen, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll launch in. Yes, Simon, we can see the dashboard login. Okay, so great. What you have here is the dashboard login page. As you can see, dashboard is a web tool. You can access this from literally anywhere on any device, and it's username and password protected. This is important because this way you can assign uh, specific uh, user rights to different profiles across your hotel. Uh, for instance, marketing see one set of widgets and reports, finance sees another, IT sees another, and general management probably gets to see everything. This is how it tends to work in most hotels today. And what's really nice about that dashboard is that it's fully customizable. As you can see from the screenshot now when I logged in, I'm presented with a couple of options. I can add widgets individually or I can add all widgets. And what drives this widget selection is what services and interfaces you take from Hoist Group. Uh, I'm going to click on add widget today. And here is the full list of widgets available to me. You can see there are quite a few there. Uh, we also, to help you, um, to help you navigate, we, 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 we sort by category. If I deselect business, you'll see that the selection dynamically changes there. Um, there are lots in there. Uh, if you're looking for something in Dashboard and you can't find it, then contact your local team or drop us a note at marketing at hoistgroup.com and we will make sure that you, your, your query gets forwarded to the right people. So coming back to the live session, there are a few other things that I just wanna point out before we get into uh, the dashboard demo itself. At the top right here, you have these nine dots. This is called the maze next to your login details, okay? Within the maze, you have all the services provided to you by Hoist Group. I'm a super user, so you will see everything in here, um, but many of you will take a number of services from us and all the additional services in a over and above uh, dashboard will also feature here. So if you have guest internet from us, there is an extranet function here. There's a managed conference tool. If you take the multi-platform unified content management system, this is where you uh, access your single portal of access to all those systems. Likewise, if you take PMS from us, here's the Hotsoft online tool and so on and so forth. So if you're ever not sure how to find a certain feature or function within the Hoist Group family of products and services that we provide to you today, just go and click on the maze and that will give you access to all of them. 
What's more, we also have over here on the left hand side, uh, we have uh, reports and report scheduling. I'm going to go into more detail on that a little bit later in this demonstration. You can also, if you click on this bell icon, you can check out your messages and alerts from within the tool. So it's a good way to check if things have been followed up uh, or what the status of certain parameters are. And then finally, if you click on this bottom icon here, this is uh, up-to-date global COVID-19 information. We get this from the world famous John Hopkins University based in Maryland in the US. We did walk through this back in on the 9th of November, but if you need a refresher or you weren't at the session, just ask us via the Q&A tab uh, in your Zoom taskbar or pick up the recording that we'll make available uh, to you at the end of the week. As you can see, this is dynamic data designed to give you just a different perspective to perhaps your local environment on, on what's happening in the world of COVID-19, how this is affecting countries and occupancy and bookings, and really designed to try and help you run your hotel uh, in, in face or in spite of all the challenges that we face today. To get back to the uh, dashboard demo itself, uh, if you look here at the second icon on the left, it's access to widgets. This is your shortcut back to your widget selection. We haven't selected any yet, but we'll do that in a second. So wherever you are in dashboard, if you need to get back to your widgets, just click on access to widgets at the top there. I'm going to add three widgets today for looking into the weird and wonderful world of TV content insights. And to make the magic happen, I'm going to choose, let's have a look. Let's go for uh, cast a TV status. Nope, uh, no, I won't choose that one. I'm going to choose TV and radio channel usage. I'm going to choose video on demand or VOD usage. And I'm going to choose, yes, cast a TV usage as my final one. You see, I just clicked on uh, the three add to dashboard symbols there. I scroll up to the top of the page, click on return to dashboard. And hey, presto, here is the simplified view of the three widgets that we are looking for today. Um, as I've showed in previous sessions, they are drag and droppable, so you can change the order of them if you wish. Once you've got an order that is right for you, you can pin them so that they don't move anymore. You can unpin them so that they do move again, and you can really create a personalized view uh, for yourself on a dashboard. And what you see here is a simplified view. And just with a quick glance at the dashboard on my personalized widget selection, I can see that all three of them are in green. What does this mean? This means I don't need to take any further action. So I can focus on the next job for me in my hotel, of which I'm sure I've got dozens at any one time. And the reason there's a color coding system, and by the way, if anything wasn't working within the parameters that you set for the service, this wouldn't be a green bar across the simplified view of the widget, it would be red. And that would draw your attention automatically to what needs to be investigated and allow you to potentially troubleshoot it or even take guest mitigation measures, such as taking a room out of service in the PMS if the television has died, so that your guest doesn't turn up in a room and cannot switch on the TV, which they might write a negative review about on TripAdvisor or one of the other social media. So Hoist Dashboard gives you the power to proactively and preemptively, this is the point, you know, address, address address these issues and maximize your guest satisfaction within your hotel. A moment ago, I shared with you that it's you who set the parameters uh, for the service operational thresholds and levels in your hotel. You do this by clicking on the three dots here in the widget, and you'll see that there are various uh, functions available. If you ever want to know what a widget is, run down to widget help, click on it, and here is data on what the widget is and what it provides you. And there's also a refresh interval, how often this data is refreshed in the tool. And this varies from service to service and widget to widget. This one is once per day per hotel, but some of them can be as much as every five minutes. Some of them are longer, some of them are shorter. You know, it's, it's very varied depending on what the service of the application and what the widget's looking at, okay? But coming back to what we were just saying, click on the three dots. And what happens here is you have a function called edit alert. If you click on edit alert, you can set what's known as a threshold and the threshold has a qualifier and you can add an alphanumeric value into there. So you define this and you can change them later if your service levels change or if you wanna see a difference in your service level. 
And what happens is you save it and then anything operating in green is operating within the threshold that you have set up for it. But you can do more than just set a threshold. You can also through the edit alert function enable alerts to be made to you. So what's the relevance of this? Well, if I'm running around a hotel, I might not be looking at the dashboard view. And if there is an issue, I might miss something if I'm not looking at the dashboard view the whole time. We don't expect you to have to do that every day of the week and every hour of the day. You've got more important things to be focusing on for client and guest delivery. So the alert function enables you to set up, uh, again, a threshold over a specific time period. And it will automatically send you an email should something go out of that threshold. What's more, you can also add additional email addresses. So if you're off duty that day, or if you want to share this with front of house and general management and, and duty on manager on duty, you can create this and it will remain in place until you tell it to stop. So that every time a service or a set of parameters goes out of threshold, whoever's on that distribution list, including you, will automatically get notification of it. OK, and this is, you know, this is really important for maintaining good service delivery. Let's jump into the widgets themselves. The first one I'm going to go to, you can see on this demo location that it's operating in green. I'm using a demo location today because uh, we want to maintain privacy and GDPR com compliance with the data. Um, but again, if you want to do this in real time with your own properties, have a play around on the dashboard. And if you're stuck, get in touch with your local office. And if you can't get in touch with your local office for some reason, drop us a note at marketing at .com. You can expand from this simplified view. And I'm going to go to the advanced view uh, for TV and channel usage. And what happens is I get much more data. And if I hover over any of the icons, it tells me a little bit more about that data. So this is TV channels. And if I hover here, there are 15 TV channels available in my demo hotel, of which five channels are being viewed over this time period. And you set the time period by clicking on this little button at the bottom left. You can either have defaults of periods or you can set a custom period between dates that you specify. Uh, let's just keep this as, as, as the last 24 hours. Um, I can also see that the usage rate has increased to 50% in this period, and that's that's five hours worth, and that's 5% up on the previous time period. Okay. The same methodology applies for your radio selection through the TV platform too. And let's go to what we call the enlarged view. And in the enlarged view, I get more data still. I can see a breakdown by channel or radio station type. And I can see in this example that my guests are not sporty people, despite the fact there's been some major sporting events on in that period. My guests, however, seem to love youth and general uh, content-oriented programming. And I could, based on the data, which of course you check over a longer time period than 24 hours, you know, I could look at changing my channel mix if I'm not getting sporty people in, but I'm getting lots of young and general viewers in. You know, I have the ability there to actually alter the mix of my channel lineup to better suit those demographics of people. And why is that important? Well, if you give them what they want, they'll love you for it and they'll reward you through loyalty and repeat stays. And you can glean even more data on this through the report functions over here. There are a whole load. These are some chain reports that we have set up already, but you can create your own report. And the way you do that is you can either do it from scratch again, go to your local uh, hoist office for, for support on this, or you can take a preset template here. And there are lots and lots of preset templates. We're talking about TV in this instance. So I enter TV into the, uh, into the, um, uh, the search bar there and let's click on tv usage summary and here is the sort of template for creating of my report so what i do here is i can select a date range again it can be a predefined one or it can be a custom range i can add a hotel or if you have the, the ability to look at multiple multiple hotels you can add multiple hotels and compare them all in a single place so it just simplifies your life you can also 
search by group. I know there are a number of Radisson people on these training sessions. So if you want to differentiate between viewing stats in Park Inn versus blue versus red, that's possible in the tool. And you can split it again by country as well. Um, so lots of different levels to drill down to analyze your data here. The other thing you can do is you can select the data fields that you keep in. Okay, you can also remove data fields. And if you remove it and you decide you want to re-add it, simply go to the drop down and uh, you can re-add that data field. Again, this is something you may well need some help with. So if you're stuck on what any of these means, do drop us a note or do get in contact with your local voice group office. And I'm sure they'll be delighted to help walk you through that. The reports are also typically available in multiple formats. This one is only available in Excel. We'll see some other formats in some of the other reports that we'll go into in a minute. Um, and you can also enable scheduling, and this is really important too. So let's say you have a weekly meeting in this area, whatever it may be, you can schedule a weekly report. Let's say that week meeting is at one o'clock in the afternoon, you can schedule it at 12 o'clock. So, and most importantly, you can also add email addresses of the distribution list, heads of department and the like, so that an hour before the meeting every week, that up-to-date information is arriving in their inbox, meaning you can go into the meeting, you know, uh, armed with, with all the data you need and they can have pre-read it and make, make your meeting very efficient, okay? If you save the report, it will continue to generate on a weekly basis until you tell it to stop. But quite often, you know, a general manager will come and ask you, hey, I need the data for the last two days, and it might not fall within your weekly time period here. So if you want to pull out a report in near real time, you just click on the export button, uh, and that report will generate for you. Again, here's one I pulled off on Friday night. Um, as I was doing the preparation for this. This is a real hotel, um, but I have changed the uh, the location name. Matt, can you just confirm that you can see that I've switched screens here? Yes, so I'll go. Fantastic. And what you have here is a printout of, or a, an extract, should I say, of lots and lots of relevant data. You've got a creation date, you've got what the report is, you've got the time period. This is a 24 hour period, which was on Friday when I was prepping for this. And you can start to see lots more data, what the type of channel is in this instance, what the channel name is, what the number of views were over that 24 hour period, what the average of the views are daily, year to date, what total time was taken over, what is the overall percentage of usage and what the percentage of usage is year to date of that channel amongst the channel mix. And again, what you can start to do here is build a view on you know, what channels are the most popular and conversely, what channels are not used if you scroll down there and just improve your channel mix. You can also, why not cheekily go and say to the channel providers, hey, hang on a second, you're distributing your service in my hotel. This is distribution for you. Give me some money for that. Why not go and ask uh, CNN for that? Try and reverse the tables. I think you'll probably fall on deaf ears, but hey, you know, we can at least ask in life. Um, Let's go back to the widgets. Uh, again, the shortcut back to the widget view is this uh, speedometer that you have in uh, the top uh, in the top there. And what we are going to look at now is the video on demand widget. You can minimize widgets by going back to widget view and clicking on simplify. Uh, you can also get rid of widgets, but just by clicking on re remove widget. And if I clicked yes there, it would go go back into my widget pool. If I wanted to come back and get it again, uh, I should just click on my widget pool again, reselect it, return to dashboard, and it will repopulate. So if you accidentally delete something, don't worry. Uh, it's always there. You just have to, if you've deleted it, find it again from, from the list of widgets and just re-add it. It's a very, very simple process. Let's go straight to the advanced view in video on demand. And what you see in the advanced view here, uh, is again some interesting information. Let's hover on the films. You can see I've got 114 films there of which 65 have been watched. It's a usage rate of 57.02%, which is actually a decrease of 13% on the previous 24 hours. What should I do here? Should I check that with occupancy and how that corresponds? Is there a di direct link or do I need to refresh the movies that I have in my selection here? And if I hover on the columns, I can see the video on demand types by classification. And if I head to the widget drill down, which is the sort of ultimate expansion of this view, 
I can get a real time overview of what movies are in my hotel at the moment if I'm taking video on demand. Is it a new title? What the title is? Is it HD or SD? When it was released? What type of movie it is? What language tracks are there? What subtitles are available? And how many views are, am I getting? And you can also export that. So let's click on here. I mentioned earlier that you can export to various different formats. Let's go for PowerPoint for this one. Give it a few seconds because it's pooling the data. And there we have a live in real time, albeit from a demo location, PowerPoint extraction of that report, which is something I can add to my weekly reporting data uh, as part of the KPIs that I have within my hotel. And you can, of course, um, schedule more complex reports through the reporting function. Again, just go in and type on VOD uh, or on usage. So again, very, very easily done. And the final uh, widget that I'm going to go to is the TV usage widget. You'll notice that when I went back there and clicked on access to widgets, it came back to where exactly where I left off. So if I have a widget view that I want to open and set, you don't have to go and reopen them every time. It'll give you your personalized tailored view as to how you like it every time you go back into this page. And that's, that's just really handy as well. Uh, the last thing we're going to look at is the cast TV usage widget. Let's go into uh, advanced here. And within the advanced widget, I can see that I have a usage of 10%, i.e. 10% of my rooms are using Caster TV. This is what we call the Chromecast uh, casting service within Hoist Group. And if I go to other areas of the widgets, I can see the evolution over time. And more importantly, I can see what, uh, what the users are going to. I can't see their, their actual content. That would be a bit invasive in terms of guest privacy, but I can see what percentage Netflix accounts for, or what percentage new uh, YouTube accounts for over time. And I can, of course, expand that time period either on the defaults or a custom range of my choosing. Uh, again, there are also reports available here for uh, the Caster TV, like everything else. Again, as a first time user, you might not be sure where to go. So let's type in cast here. And here are the two Caster TV reports that I can then extrapolate. You'll see that there are different formats here available in Excel and PDF. Um, what I'm going to do is go to one I extracted earlier. And here is the data of my Caster TV extraction. Again, I've anonymized the data, but you get the room number and you know that they're using Visa or YouTube. You can see what device is paired with it and you can see how long they're using it for. So you can really start to understand how impactful a service Caster TV over Chromecast is, is in your hotel. Does it work for your guest demographic or does it not work for your de guest demographic and therefore drive any investment decisions necessary to either expand the solution or, or, or keep the solution as it is or indeed get rid of it. The point is you have the data at your fingertips and you're able to make those informed decisions on the back of the information that we present here through Hoist Dashboard.